G'day Team St Albans. Well, I think I've counted 11 Sundays where we haven't worshipped together and a couple of other significant occasions. And it's, so it's with prayer and hope that I look forward to next Sunday, June the 14th, where we'll be back together again under this roof. Under certain rules, but back together again. So as we look at the scriptures today and look forward to our return to public worship, let us pray. Transform us by the renewing of our minds, open our lips to share your name and open our hearts to go where you would lead. And we pray you will be with us always. Amen. Oh, well, friends, I was struck this week by a conversation I had with a young waiter in a cafe. He was talking about how before the pandemic, he could take or leave interaction with people. He was a self-confessed introvert. You know, he would have the minimum of conversation with people to get by. And as part of the paperwork game, he didn't really enjoy interacting with people. But as he talked with us, he became quite animated, relating just how much he enjoyed talking with people now. It sounded like he was completely transformed. I couldn't imagine this guy as an introvert with the minimal amount of interaction with people. How wonderful it was to see that. And I've observed two going down the street, saying good day to people and people stopping and having lengthy conversations and clearly enjoying the human interaction. Over the lockdown, people have spent a lot of time doing video calls because they just long for that face to face. Italians came out on their balconies singing sweetly to one another. Introverts are outed. And because we're cut off from one another, I think we've learned afresh just how essential relationship is to being human. There's also been grave concern amongst some of the folks I work alongside about those families that suffer from the scourge of domestic violence. They're concerned about the end of the lockdown because of what will spill out from that and the pain that will be finally revealed. And on the news we're seeing this weekend, the pain of broken relationships across nations around the world. We're learning afresh that there is much work yet to be done to repair and reconcile relationships, especially between black and indigenous peoples and the rest of the population and the community. Because you can't use people as slaves, you can't steal someone's land and strip it of its best resources and blow up its heritage and pretend everything is okay now, thanks very much and not have the sins of the parents land on the heads of the children to the third and fourth generation of those who forsake the justice of the Lord. Trinity Sunday, which we're marking today, is one of those Sundays that's pretty token in the church calendar through the year. It's the one day in the entire year where we're supposed to talk about the fact that the God of Israel I am who I am is finally and fully revealed and named as a relationship between the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. This is a relationship whose depths of love with diversity are so profound they are indivisibly one. This is a relationship so intense and powerful that it issued in the entire universe populated it with astonishing creatures, none more so than that unique creature that bears God's relational image, humanity. This is the relationship around which the entire universe revolves and into which we human creatures, astonishingly, are invited to participate. With the paucity of our relationships brought to the fore, as the merry-go-round of modern life has come to a screaming halt in the pandemic, the doctrine of the Holy Trinity 
rather than being an oddity or a curiosity, looked at briefly and then just as quickly forgotten, instead might be our roadmap for healing and transformation across our planet. If we want to heal our broken relationships and build a better world, would it kill us to take a longer and deeper look at the beating heart of the universe? Long before he ever explicitly outed himself as an eternal, loving and unified relationship of three persons, God was sending some pretty strong messaging about his character and about the nature of his relationship with us and about his expectations on our relationships with one another. Look back at our first mountaintop experience in those readings that you've got listed there in Exodus 34, 1 to 8. In your English translations, it'll say God's name is L-O-R-D, Lord. But it's I am who I am, or I will be who I will be in the original lingo. Have a look at the passage in the chapters before. God had rescued a bunch of dirt poor slaves from genocide and oppression under an authoritarian regime and brought them into freedom. How did those slaves relate to him? after that how did they react they made a golden calf with the fat loot named the calf i am who i am as some kind of a sick joke and then went on to have one of the most massive drunken sex parties in history yep that's what they did the i am's chosen leader moses proceeded in response to go full fringe loony religious leader and with his young religious zealots by his side murdered thousands yet yeah, you're going to act like that we're going to kill you and moses then had the hide to tell them all well god made me do it it's on the back of that whole mess that god comes down mysteriously and stands on that mountain with Moses and then he ran backwards and forwards singing singing I am who I am 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 gosh how many times is he gonna say his name maybe he wants to make a point who is he a God merciful and gracious slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness keeping steadfast love for the thousandth generation forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin which means sure your bad behavior will impact you it'll impact your kids and their kids and their kids and their kids after them but the impact of your stuff arts will eventually run out of pup my blessings will overtake them and last forever who is god the one who will hang on to his relationship with those ungrateful ex-slaves no matter how much they spurn him and mock him he's the one who will hang on to this overly zealous religious leader and his murderous extremist mates who is god he's the one who will stick with them well beyond their stuff-ups and finally bring them into freedom and blessing this is who god chooses to be for them the implication is that if this is who god is then this is how we must be and relate to each other. This is who we must be for each other. We too must choose to sing. I am merciful and gracious, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love and faithfulness, forgiving iniquity and transgression and sin. Yes, you might stuff up. You will suffer consequences, sadly but my love for you will outlast the wrong you do to me. Yeah, sorry, I'm not going to try singing that, but you get the point. And all of that is right here in the heart of the Hebrew Testament. Hmm. How we should relate to one another. Because God sets the example. Fast forward a couple of thousand years to a mountaintop in Galilee. Jesus had chosen his 11. They had been... His disciples for three years lived with him side by side, day and night. 
They'd seen him do things only God could do, and they'd heard him say things only God could or perhaps should say. Here on this last day, they all worshipped him, but some doubted if they should because worship, according to their, um, their Jewish faith, was reserved for God alone. So there were some reservations because they were still at the very beginning of coming to understand that Jesus had revealed something astonishing about God that had been there all along, but no one had had the eyes to see it because they'd never been quite close enough in relationship. Now that Jesus had received authority over the entire universe as a gift, he used that gift not to subjugate humanity or enforce his will by flashing swords at people or pointing guns at them, he wasn't trying to subjugate and take control of humanity through a Belt and Road initiative or riot police and tear gas or through robo debt and threats. Instead, he rolls out his authority by sharing it, by sending his 11 mates out to invite all nations into relationship with him because it's in relationship with him that the world would be transformed for good. Jesus wasn't going to wave his hand or speak a word and wipe everything clear and start again or make it all good and all better. Such is his relationship with the disciples that he makes the future of the world dependent on them and their participation in relationship with him. Yeah, that's right. He didn't expect them to change the world all by themselves. They were going to need a bit of help. But depend on them, he would. Do you think you and I would be here as disciples today if they hadn't made good? on their end of the relationship and that if G do you think you and I would be here today if Jesus hadn't made good on his promise to be with them always to the end of the age you and I are Christians here in a nation tens of thousands of kilometers removed from the Middle East and removed from those 11 disciples from time we're here today because of the strength of that relationship. The same work though is still before us as disciples who have been invited in and yet his promise still holds good for us. When you look at the news and pray that pagan prayer, the government should do something or someone should do something. How about you? do something go make a disciple for a change teach someone about the father the son and the holy spirit and what they've done in the life of the world and the good things that have come from his relationship with people testify to what he's done in your life teach people to obey his commands to love one another, to say sorry, to repent when we're wrong, and to forgive. And watch him be with you and work with you. Jesus says to you, his chosen disciple today, all authority in heaven and on earth has been given to me. Go therefore, and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything that I have commanded you. And I will be with you always to the end of the age. Amen. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit.